Welcome to the map Fangon Forest in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 for a video commentary between good and evil. We have Gondor versus Isengard. Fangon Forest, it's a pretty big map with plenty of settlements to begin the game with, which kind of makes it favorable for the evil faction, but maybe Gondor can pull this off. Uruks are zooming to the settlement. Offense is the best defense, and when you capture this, it will be a 1v1. And in a 1v1, soldiers don't stand a chance against the mighty Uruks. In the meantime, Hobbit is going to be sent to creep this Leia. And we have a barracks opening for Gondor, so he will be able to bring more and more soldiers very, very soon. But in the meantime, Isengard is literally taking everything, <laughs> you know? It's a pretty solid technology, you know, sending your Uruks forward to capture the opponent settlements while giving up your own settlements. And Gondor has to bring more and more soldiers to clean this up. In the meantime, the Uruks are able to arrive around this location. And the worker is trying to beat... Oh my god, nice beat here from the Isengard player. Ooh, boom, son. I mean, that's a very good move, actually. And you can pull this off with the Uruks because Uruks are very fast and you can actually disengage from the troll way easier compared to the soldiers. But a beautiful punch. This troll doesn't care, you know? He doesn't care at all. In the meantime, the soldiers will be able to clean up this settlement, no problemo. They will also get a lot of experience from this. But remember, Gondor was forced to use the Alvin Wood around this location, which means the Uruks here don't have a problem dealing with the soldiers in a one-on-one -on -one situation, as more of them will follow every few seconds. In the meantime, Gondor player was able to creep this with the Hobbit and the Soldier. Hobbit was able to get level 2, and the Soldier is also level 2, pretty strong. Gondor in the meantime bringing more and more soldiers on the field. But again, you need to outnumber the Uruks, so you need to outspam your opponent, which is easier said than done. In the meantime, here the soldier will be cleaned up. No problem for the Uruks. Maybe they will hit. Uh, they will hit. <clears throat> I can't even talk. Maybe they will hit level two, but I don't think so. Oh, that's gonna be close, though. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. But this soldier with the Hobbit is going to be quite difficult to deal with. In order to deal with this in an easy way, Isengard has My to use Warchant. And we hear Boromir, the captain of Gondor. I mean, very good looking map for Aizen still. He will be able to clean this up, no problem. Hobbit is going to hit level, two very, uh, level 3 very soon. Can't even talk. Good looking castle too. He has almost full base. Warchan is going to be used in a one-on-one -on -one situation. The soldiers level 2 are actually quite strong. But Warchan is giving you just 50% DPS and 50% armor. Which is very effective in those skirmishes. And the soldiers will still be cleaned up by the Uruks in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Okay. So beautiful. Gondor has a level 2 soldier over here as well. The Alvin Wood will be used for the second time very, very soon. And I think Hobbit was killed too. But there comes Boromir, who was just able to creep this one. Oh, Boromir doesn't joke around. Hitting like a truck, just like in the films. Killing all these Uruks. Maybe Vorks could be actually a good choice because I, uh, this condo has a very bad looking castle actually. He has only double furnace, uh, double blacksmith in the base, going for a very early farm here. This can only work if you can keep your farms protected, but I think that's not gonna be the case. Isengard has still many, many settlements under his control, getting lots of wood bonus, making sure that he's able to fill up the castle very, very fast. I believe he's saving up for Lourdes. Lourdes, obviously, is a counter hero to Boromir and Faramir. When he's level 3 with the Carnage, he can kill them both in a 1v2 situation. Because his Carnage will also make him immune to knockback. So that means Boromir can't knock him down on the ground. But Boromir will be cleaning up this area too. Getting very close to level 6. Level 7 is going to unlock his own uh, power spike with the Four Gondor. He will give himself 40% more DPS. But we have lords up on the field, the fighting Urukai. And he can creep this. But what is Farami doing there? Farami was trying to fight him on a, on, a, on a horse. You can't do this. He needs to get dismounted, but he's so low now. And Isengard can just cripple him and kill him. That's going to bring Lourdes a very big step closer to level 3. There are also Berserkers around this location. And the creep. Oh. 
he's shooting the Lourdes. Does he heal? Yeah, he has heal. He's gonna use it. But you need to kill the Berserker first. In this situation, Berserker is dealing way more damage than Lourdes does. He's gonna be used the warning arrow to kill the Berserker, not on Lourdes. Lourdes will solo kill him and get level 4. Now that's gonna become dangerous for Boromir. Because even though he's level 7, he will get level 7 now. He still doesn't stand a chance against the Lourdes. With the Carnage, he will get a huge damage boost. Also get increased attack speed. Which will make him to a very dangerous hero for every low tier heroes and that counts pretty much every hero beside Aragorn and Gandalf. When Gondor has a full base finally, not even full base, he has still one empty spot in the base. He has one, two, three, four, five, six blacksmiths in total to get the full discount of the steel bonus. He might also capture this outpost at the bottom side. He's going for the archer range. Remember he has the leadership from Boromir, double leadership when this is active. He, he will be giving you in total 100% damage leadership. And when you should fight around the statue, you get another 75. But the army from Gondor won't have any armor leadership. For that reason, you need either Faramir to get level 5. Or you need Gandalf on the field. Armory up on the field for Aizen. Not bad. Aizen's eco should look pretty, pretty decent. You can even go for them in the land. Lourdes will get level 5 now. That's pretty good. That's also 60% DPS with the... Warchan combined, you have 110% damage and 50% armor, which will make your army stronger than the army from Gondor. Remember, the Warchant gives you armor, which is a better combat stat in an army against army fight than damage. Outpost control for Gondor. I mean, Isengard is doing a good job, you know? Kind of contesting. There is a Faramir, but he needs to be very careful. If you get, if you get crippled from this Lourdes, he's gonna 100% die. Even though it looks like Lourdes is low level, uh, low HP, I don't think you can kill him fast enough. Boromir can't show his quality in this game, but Boromir might be able to do that. Archer range hitting level 2. Gondor is kind of broke, but I think it's going to be good very, very soon. Oh, be careful. He's going to use the warning at all. Can he kill him in, it in time? Nah, he's going to get away, right? And yeah, now you are war chanted with the Berserker damage, though. Faramir, show your quality! No, the Berserkers with the Warchant will once again send him to the graveyard. And Lord was able to get away too. He was able to get into the Citadel, so he's in a good spot. And he needs to revive Faramir one more time. Faramir is still level 3. That's the starting level from Faramir. Keep that in mind. Armor upgrade purchased. You also bought the Ban upgrade. That's very important. Each level will make you significantly stronger. But Isengard getting lots of time, he will have the time and the money to get himself the mighty wizard Saruman. And we might see a new power is rising. He's dominating the top side of the map, not even close. Complete dominance. Getting a lot of cash, resources. Boromir giving you damage leadership. But in order to kill Saruman fast enough, you have to have. And that's very important, you have to have. Faramir's warning arrow. Faramir needs to always use the warning arrow on Saruman. That's the most important damage, burst damage. It can give you the, the edge in those fights to keep Saruman away from your army. You don't want to give him the chance to get close to you and use the warm tongue, which can be the game winning move for him. He's tr trying to destroy the Orphank. I mean, they are dealing 60% more damage, but here they are in a, in a choke point and you don't want to be there. There comes the Rohirrim summon, but the wizard must join in the... Ooh, he will be able to steal them. Can Far can he steal? No. The stun can't be connecting. There comes the fireball. Lourdes got killed, and he doesn't use the Fort Gondor ability. Now the combos are bealing, but remember there is no heal available for Gondor. It means Boromir might die. He is trying to focus down Boromir, but the Rohirrim in the meantime are taking care of everything that is there from the Isengard player. Saruman is still remaining on the field. That's the most important thing. He's going to use the Speechcraft and level up those armies to level 2. The combo will be now once again handed over to Gondor. And that was not a bad fight by all means for Gondor. I think he was able to save his Boromir and also his combo was given away. And remember the Warm Tongue ability from Saruman has a very long cooldown, right? I mean this one has 4 minutes and 30 seconds cooldown. It's a major game-changing ability. And for the next big two fights, eventually, he will not be able to use it again. 
In the meantime, we have the Tower Guard Soldier Combination for the map control because Isengard was taking literally everything away. Literally everything away from Gondor. Gondor is going to be starving to death very soon in terms of economical uh, power. There comes finally the Steeple. On a map like this, we need the Steeple. Gondor will keep pushing. He has now four combos in total. Isengard has six and a half power points though. Half a power point needed for the Freezing Rain, which will give you the chance to... Deny all the leadership from your opponent. The Orfang will be destroyed. I hope he's reviving Lourdes. Yeah, he's reviving Lourdes at the outpost. It's very important and very good. Lourdes was level 5. The level 3 furnace is going to be destroyed. There comes Saruman with the fireball. He's going to get chunked. But you see what I'm talking about? If there is a Faramir, you would be chunking him by now to 50% HP only. So he will be able to deal great economical damage to Isengard. But now Isengard is committing. And now you have to deal. Ooh, the, oh my god, the rain, the works are hungry. Where is Boromir? Boromir needs to use them for Gondor to stun the works. Nice stun. Yes, though. Abort the mission. Now they are going rotating back to the well. But Isengard can keep going. The Saruman is going to be able to use the Fireball or the Visa Plus here. Beautiful. The Vorks actually smash everything. Now that's a very good situation to understand the mechanics of the game. If you disengage, um, you can hunt them down with the Vork Riders just like you did. And if you ever stop to fight them back, your army will catch up to them. And you will be melting them. There comes the Warning Arrow. Ooh, the warning arrow, maybe? He can't stop. If he... Oh, but there is cripple. You shall not move. Hide in the forest all you want. Boromir. Oh, what is happening? Oh, never mind. He's trying to finish him off with the... Nice. But now Boros is going to pay for this. Now the carnage run off. He has no heal from the spellbook. Remember that? On the land, they are melting. Oh my god, on the land, they were melting with the bottom of the ship. Oh, the stun, but they are level 3, they can't be stunned. And the bottom here will be getting killed in return. In the meantime, Isengar was able to take this outpost down, that's pretty good. And he's rebuilding the castle too. But the most important thing you need to understand is the map control. Look at the minimap, you will see there is lots of orange at the top side, but barely any purple at the bottom side. So he has the outpost with triple farm, that's good. But he was just building up as you can see so his money is not looking that hard if he would be able to keep this out so um, outer settlements alive he would have gandalf by now and remember here around this fight if there is gandalf on the field it would be a whole different situation now isengard has lost both the heroes yes but he has an army that something gondor doesn't have but he has no pikemen so with this being said, two, are, two uh, horsemen, two knights of Gondor, can actually demolish this, but that won't be happening anymore as the pikes are here to reinforce the army from the Isengard. The Tower Guard soldier combination taking care of the taking care of the outpost. He was also getting this outpost under his control to get some of the money back. He's missing, but he has also eagles. Now the outpost will be taken down. Nice placement. I like it when you place the pikemen in between the combos. This combo, um, you know, Uruk with Crossbowman is stronger against other combos compared to the Pikeman Crossbowman combo, but you need to protect them with good micro. You need to always put the Pikeman in between your combos with the Porcupine formation to have the maximum revenge damage potential against the potential charge of either the Rohirrim Summon or the Knights of Gondor. The Lambir Mill level 3 is going to be destroyed. Now, finally, Knights are taking over the game. There comes the great Rohirrim Summon. There comes the war chant. The Rohirrim are charging into the pikemen. That's something you shouldn't be doing. And remember, the knights have no shields, which make them quite vulnerable against the archer damage. And there are lots of pikemen. Isengard was kind of prepared for such a potential rush. There comes the healing from the spellbook. But the knights are just feeding power points, as you can see and tell. The power points from Isengard are raising, bringing him a big stop, big step closer to the. Balrog special summon. They have also Lourdes back in the business, but Isengard is kind of starving too in terms of money. He has not the money to revive his Saruman, not yet, not anytime soon. Gondor on the other side has lost the archery, so he was forced to rebuild it here. 
but he has it now again to level two he has three combos under his control but you need Boro and eventually also faramir to spot them green is going to be available for the next big fight Isengard is now taking over the bottom side. Lourdes exposed a little bit, but remember he has the carnage for the self peel potential. He's gonna get chunked a little bit, but now he's gonna turn and take this. Okay. Eisen is doing a phenomenal job here. Might go for the siege, but his command points kept. He has too much up on the field. Oh my god. Gondor was able to win this fight. 10 power points against 3 power points. Gondor has the chance to summon the, the Eagles if he wants to. He could have been able to summon it here and kill Lords and few pikemen. But I think you want to get the maximum out of the summon. You don't want to summon it here though. There are 3 combos. They will just melt you know, your Eagles in a few seconds. Gondor is still kind of poor and broke. But he's going to rush Gandalf. So 2 power points will be have to, have to be invested into the Gandalf to white. And this might be able to stall the game a little bit. Because Lourdes can't be everywhere. But remember, there are only two giant pathways on this map. You can't pass the through the middle of this map. When he means to. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to, ladies and gentlemen. Gun of the White is finally approaching and getting ready with his Shadow Vex. To dominate the Isengard, just like in the films. Okay. No shields. Again, major upgrade. The combos are rotating and killing. Fishing power points for Gondor. Beautiful lightning sword is incoming from the mighty wizard. Three power points unlocked. Remember, there is a level 8 Boromir with the glory of Gondor. So he will make money for you by killing enemy stuff. Um, but he has still not the money for Faramir. He is, he is still missing lots of power uh, command points in the command points department. Eagles, once again, can be used. And the Eagles main goal should be always to kill Lurtz to get him out of the way. And then your Ganov can approach the army and go for a juicy visa blast. Because in an all-out fight, even though your army is looking very strong right now, you still will not be able to win because the freezing rain is available for the next big fight, okay? Okay. 12 power points versus 3 power points. They are pretty close, both of them, to both EOD and Padrock. The pikeman could rotate to the farm, but I think he's not paying attention to the pikeman. Gondor is coming back, but map control is once again going to the hands of Aizen. Saruman is going to be back very soon on the field. No Sharku all game long. Could be nice to support the War Riders a little bit. I mean, it's only 1300, so it's not a very expensive hero. Three combos with Boromir leadership. Knights without shields. One of them being level 5, one of them being level 3. And it looks like they will take down this outpost at the bottom left corner. Oh, he's lucky that he didn't pay attention. Isengard, I believe, isn't able to see this. Now uh, he's able to see this. They go for a trample. Blast him. Now he's going to use the lightning sword, not the blast. Beautiful trample incoming from the Valk Riders, but they will actually be able to get away. The banner was able to survive. Now the Ganav is rotating and going for a wizard blast here. Take this. Level 4. Don't underestimate him. When they put you... When, you, when they put yourself... Put themselves in the porcupine formation they will be very strong but aizen is trying to rotate from the bottom side remember there is freezing rain they have double triple leadership with the war chant and this army will be super scary there comes the beautiful but there comes the eagles he's gonna cripple the boromir and get get up oh what what okay the ending was kind of questionable <laughs> Because it, it was looking kind of grim for Gondor, but the cripple was wasted. I think Ganav had the chance to do something there. I don't know what happened there, but anyways, GG well played. Now you can, you know, let's make a funny thing out of this. Let me know in the comment section down below. I think maybe Gondor player lost the connection or something. What would happen in this specific in this specific fight if Gondor didn't quit? Had Eagles there, Ganav coming, Rain was active. Who would? be able to win this fight let me know in the comment section down below thank you for watching see you next time until then take care of yourself keep eating like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys